The Bravia 9 is probably the best TV currently on the market. And you're wondering why? Well, let's take a look. Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to Board at Work where we check out TVs, play video games and if you want to watch more videos like this and see my beautiful face, click the subscribe button, notification icon so you can watch more videos from me. So before I go ahead and start this video, I want to thank Sony for gifting me this TV as well as the home theater system here. This is not a sponsored video and all thoughts are my own. So why do I think the Bravia 9 is the best TV on the market? There are tons of TVs out there. We saw the brand new Samsung OLED, the S95D, and that was a really gorgeous TV. Uh, but what Sony has here is a TV that's built for entertainment, especially when you pair with the Bravia, the Quad Bravia Home Entertainment System, which we'll talk about more later on in the video. It really stands out. The Bravia 9 itself is a behemoth of a TV. It comes in three sizes, 65, 75, and 85. And trust me, that 75 inch TV, which I have here, it's heavy. It's about 99.2 pounds in terms of weight with the stand. And if it's just in the packaging, it's 138 pounds. So bring a friend and another friend, some beer and pizza, because you're gonna need all the help you can get to actually set up this TV. That being said, the TV itself is a nice looking TV. It's got two stands which can be placed either at the center or either ends, allow you to place a soundbar in the middle if you choose to. Now the TV is thick. Comparing it to say your iPhone or even say an OLED TV like the Samsung Q95D, this is not a slim boy. It's just a very thick and big TV. You do have four HDMI ports, 2.1. Uh, you also have an ER port as well. And you have a central channel port, which we'll talk about later with our home entertainment system. Now, the TV has some really great technology built in it. This mini LED TV has, of course, the you know Sony's XR processing, which is well known to give us some really good colors, better management, especially for brightness, all that fun stuff. It's a QLED panel. Uh, you've got an X wide range angle, so giving you better angles, and also X anti reflection. I'll talk about that later on. In, in, in a second, in a second, we'll talk about the anti reflection on this TV. So, why is this TV really important for Sony? Why did they switch away from the OLED from last year? Well, Sony talked about their reference design TVs. I went to go see them earlier this year, and Sony makes reference design TVs for movie sets, for studios, and that's what everything is referenced against. And they just released a new reference design TV that goes up to, I kid you not, 4,000 nits. And they say, this TV is comparable to that. So without giving us any specs, I'm assuming this is 4,000 nits, and which means this is the brightest TV currently on the market. Nothing comes close in terms of the peak brightness. Uh, your Samsung phone, your iPhone, 1,500, 1,700. The new iPad, 1,600 nits peak brightness. Uh, some other phones from Xiaomi, the rest of them, about 2,000 something. So again, nothing comes close. But what does that mean? It means when you're watching scenes, so you're seeing all the images on screen, the scene is very bright, the colors also are rich, your color gambit is maintained because your peak brightness hits at a high level, maintaining the colors that you see there. So if you're watching the scene with the sun in there, you can actually see the sun and not just white light <laughs> in the sky. So you get the idea here. Now, what does that mean for the content you love? Well. Watching movies, it's a fun experience. Spider-Man, oof, the colors, they're rich, they're vibrant, but it's also very bright and also the scenes maintain. It's, it doesn't feel like, you know, you're out in sunlight and everything is blown out. Uh, whether you're watching something like um, the new Gran Turismo, again, everything fits. But your picture modes, this is where some of the calibration uh, that can be easily done through presets is fantastic. Normally, most people tell you you should calibrate your TV whenever you get it, but going into the different modes from IMAX Enhance, Vivid, which you should never use to watch a movie, 
trust me. Standard, which is fine. Cinema looks absolutely gorgeous. And then of course, professional, where you can go in and, and you know customize whatever you want to. This is just done so well that I haven't had to mess around with the uh, presets whatsoever. Now, when you're gaming, it also does a really good job there in giving you the presets that you need. Here you have a game menu where you have picture mode and currently knows I'm in playing with Dolby Vision on, so that's good. You can of course change motion blur, you have a black equalizer, you do have of course a screen size where you can customize the size of your screen. And then of course, if you're terrible at shooters, you can turn on the crosshairs and select a crosshair type, which is nice because some people need it, especially me. That being said, what is the gaming experience here? I played a bunch of games on both PlayStation and Xbox to see how well the TV handled in terms of gaming. Now, on the PlayStation side, uh, we played some God of War, uh, Ragnarok. You can see how vivid and sharp you look, especially very bright outdoor day scenes. Uh, the colors I still felt were a bit muted, uh, maybe just because I just didn't get much of that HDR coming through, but it looked really good. Then moving over to Horizon West, that also is a gorgeous game. It's a very colorful game. And you can see how well it handles here. Now, I think the game that really took advantage of this TV to me uh, the best way was uh, Hellblade 2. That opening sequence is dark, dull, dreary, but you can clearly see what that peak brightness can actually do. You know, in a scene where it's just gray rock, gray sky, lightning and rain. There's a separation between all the shades of gray, including the character. And that to me was really nice to see in, in a game. Same thing with Forza Motorsport, which of course is a call for game, but also requires of course higher frame rates with VRR, which this TV supports. Now Call of Duty uh, is also a game that, you know, a lot of people want to see how it handles on TV like this. And I think all these games did a very good job. But this is a TV that Sony kind of has positioned for entertainment, the movie viewing experience. How do you sit down and watch a movie like this? Now, that brings me to the sound quality of the TV. Now, I did mention I have quad speakers, but first off, this TV has eight speakers built in. You've got two in the center, two on the sides, and two on the top. And honestly, when I set up this TV, went to Netflix and had that Netflix sound to doom go off, I felt some bass. I mean, it was good. It's, look, you have to hear it for yourself. So take a listen. What do you mean, FBI? Yeah, FBI. Yeah, FBI. Yeah, FBI is the Federal Bureau of Investigation. What do you mean? But what are they doing here? That was pretty good. That was content as well as gaming content directly off the TV. Now, what about the quad theater system? Now, this is something that I could spend a full video on, but I'm just gonna quickly touch on this. The quad speaker system are basically four speakers that you set up around. And honestly, it's amazing. It's, it feels like you're in the theater. Granted, my position is a bit off, so don't judge me. I'm getting some more, I'm getting some more stands and everything to make sure it's in the right section. There's one over there and there's, there's one over there. But you get the idea. You don't understand how good it sounds. Dialogue is clean, it cuts through really well. You hook it up with a Sony subwoofer and that bass, ooh, ooh. These things are amazing. The sound quality is rich, it is vibrant. You know, Dolby Atmos, you know, everything just works because it's up firing speakers. You've got 16 speakers in total. I was about to count just speaker in one, but 16 speakers in total with these four, which give you amazing audio quality. I cannot stress enough, but honestly, just, just listen to it yourself. Just some gameplay so you understand how I felt.
Yeah, it's really good, but also a tad bit expensive at 2,500. Now, I didn't mention the pricing of the TV, which starts at 3,299, and for the 75 inch, which I have is 3,999, so four grand for the 75 inch. But is this all rosy? Do I love this TV to death that I don't care that I would spend $4,000 for this TV? Ah, hold your brakes. There are a few things that I don't like, but honestly, fairly and truthfully, it's not much. So let's go back to that anti-glare technology Sony talked about. Ah, Mm -hmm. I think this TV benefits from the fact that it has a high peak brightness. So that really aids in blocking a lot of, you know, reflectiveness on the TV. But if you have a living room that has direct window access, you're going to clearly see it. This is where I wish companies would follow some of the route that, you know, Samsung is taking with that new matte technology they use on their OLEDs as well as also their frame TVs. I know some people don't like it, I don't care. It works, it is great, and this TV would have benefited from it at least to some extent. And then the second thing that I didn't like, which might not pertain to you because this is a problem that I specifically face, and that's because when I got the TV, I had some issues where I had kind of like an ultra high pink display if you will. Uh, my screen was basically all pink, all purple, whenever I was watching content. So I was concerned about some of the QC issues with the TV, but I did get a couple of updates which fixed everything. So that was a software bug of some sort, but that's something I'm just putting in mind. So if you have that issue, check for an update, you, you most likely will solve your problem. So those are the things I didn't like. Now, a few things to round it up. You do have a remote that doesn't come with a battery, but actually a built-in battery with USB Type-C, which is nice. I'm glad people are taking that route. Samsung has done it for years. Not trying to put them in this video, but they have. Uh, and I'm glad that, you know, Sony's following suit. I also like the fact that the remote is simpler, even though I wish the buttons were more spaced out and quick access to things like Netflix, Crunchyroll, and the remote is pretty light and effective. Now, if you don't have the remote, Sony has an app as well, and it's a very simple and easy app to use. It shows you all the devices you have, including your TV, and in this case, my, of course, Pravia Theater Quad. I can go and access the TV, change the channel, change the inputs, change the apps. Very effective, and the response time is fast. Those things I like, and pairing that with Google TV, which is responsive and nice, uh, does a really good job. Uh, the one thing about Google TV though is I do wish Sony had their own operating system, maybe something similar to the PlayStation, or at least kinda, because a lot of you know users are used to that. And speaking of the PlayStation, we have Auto HDR Tone Mapping and Auto HDR Picture Mode, which basically means that this TV is built for the PlayStation. You connect it, you have, don't have to do anything else, you have to reset, or do anything, it does that for you. So this is a great TV. I am stunned by what this TV has done uh, in terms of picture, in terms of audio, in terms of peak brightness. I love it. What can I say? So if you wanna pick up the Sony Bravia 9, use our link down below. Uh, if you wanna pick up the Quad Theater system, honestly, you should. Now, which do I like better? Check them out. This is Thunder Isane. Thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.